G'day guys, this is a quick video on how to repair the crossfader on a tractor S4. If your S4 is under warranty, I suggest you take it back to the place of purchase to get a warranty fix. If your S4 is out of warranty and you don't want to send it away to get fixed and you're handy with a screwdriver, then you can try these step-by-step -step instructions to fix and fault find the problem. If you're experiencing problems with your S4 crossfader where it seems to be stuck in the middle, jittering all around the place, um, all moved over to one side and you're trying to move it across and sort of won't respond to what you are doing with it and sometimes you might be just not touching the crossfader and it's jittering around, moving around all, of, all over the place. Um, don't worry, it's easy fixed and you can do it yourself. All you need is a couple of small screwdrivers, a moldy meter with an ohm setting on it, and some wire glue with, or conductive glue. Um, moldy meters you can pick up pretty cheap, um, and the wire glue is you know about eight bucks, and you probably only need a drop of it. First thing to do is to turn it off, remove any plugs, and then pull the crossfader knob off and then flip it over remove all the screws in the back now this is the thing that will avoid the warranty and that's punching that hole and getting the last screw okay this is the um, crossfader circuit board there's two screws as you can see, um, if you undo those two and pull the wiring connector off and the board should um, come apart. Now this is the crossfader circuit board. Uh, there's a couple of components on it, just a variable resistor. Uh, capacitor and there's like one resistor and a smaller capacitor. Now, the job is to uh, remove these six small stirrups that hold this um, black metal case on the variable resistor. So they're just those little. Um, bits underneath so if you bend them down then it should um, come up and you'll get a thing circuit board looking like this um, basically that's my repaired one um, but as you can see there's a solder tab um, and then it connects onto some kind of alloy uh, based um, strip and then uh, on in that strip there's uh, like probably a carbon based uh, resistor now I drew this cartoon sort of drawing of it because um, you'll need to measure the resistances of those strips. Um, basically the slider that slides along this has, um, you probably see these two uh, little wipe, like they call like wipers that will run along the track and basically that as shorts out those two um, tracks that are side by side and then that creates the variable resistor as it slides along you get different values so um, basically you need to measure these uh, resistor strips now if you put your multimeter onto the ohm setting um, and put your probes from one end to the other on the second strip or well, the two strips in the middle um, you should get a reading of about 10,000 ohms and the other strips you should get a reading of about 0 ohms which is no resistance, should be just conductive 
Um, so you do that one for the top one and do that for the bottom one. On my S4, I had an open circuit which was in an infinite ohm reading. Um, when I was looking at it, I couldn't actually see the open circuit. It was probably just a hairline frac. So what I ended up using to bridge that small gap was just a, a bit of um, a glue wire, which is a carbon-based glue. Um, basically, you just dab it on um, using like something really fine, like a end of a small jeweler's screwdriver or a matchstick. Um, just put a tiny little dab, and that's all it needed, and allow that to dry for a, a few hours and set, and then measure your resistance again and to what the values were that I showed you before, um, and if that's all fixed, um, it's a matter of just putting it back together, and you should be back up and DJing in no time.